Hi, Derek Mahoney here. Um, I get asked uh, a lot of times by both my patients, by their parents, and by a lot of my students around the world on the interaction of uh, recurrent ear disease, um, uh, otitis media, and the dentition, right? So, number one, a good resource is this book, Your Jaws, Your Life. Uh, it's published by Dr. David uh, Page. And if you look at page 55, uh, the jaws and ear disease, fantastic summary of what I'm gonna uh, tell you. When you're young, your eustachian tube is actually parallel, right? So gravity is against you in it clearing, right? When you're young and you have very large adenoids and tonsils, if you look at the opening of the eustachian tube, it's right between the adenoids and tonsils. So all that germ-laden lymphoid tissue uh, many of those pathogens then creep into the eustachian tube. Uh, for many years, doctors thought that middle ear infection was from external sources, like swimming in dirty water, etc., etc. right? We now know it's really internal pathogens. So number one, large adenoids and tonsils. Uh, number two, young kid, eustachian tube parallel. Number three, which I think is the most important, is the tongue, right? So if you swallow correctly, lips together, breathe through your nose, tip of the tongue, uh, in the Palatine Rugae area, you'll hear a pop in your ear. What is that? They are two muscles working together. Tensor levator palatini. Those two muscles actually help clear the eustachian tube. So why isn't in so many kids uh, we're seeing this recurrent otitis media? Well, these kids have very narrow palates. The narrow palate means the tongue is in the wrong position. Number two, a lot of kids are tongue tied Right? Number three, with very large adenoids on top of the soft palate, it kind of prevents it from elevating normally. So all these factors mean that when the child swallows, their tongue goes forward rather than up. It's what we call an anterior tongue thrust, an infantile swallowing pattern, tip of tongue to lower lip swallowing habit. All of these are one and the same in, in my opinion. So what is happening is you're not getting the functional stimulation you normally get for the tense elevator muscles to work on the eustachian tube, right? So the perfect storm, narrow palate, tongue in the wrong position, large adenoids and tonsils, young child with a deep overlight. Uh, so what are some of the um, articles here referring to? Fantastic research on how you can build up primary molars and that actually helps otitis media. And what have you got to lose? You know, here's a kid who's about to get his third set of grommets, right? What are grommets? Grommets are what um, is a surgical way to drain the eustachian tube, but it's not treating the cause. It's, it's treating the symptom, right? Oh. And what happens with multiple placement of grommets? Obviously, there's scar tissue, and that can have an impact on hearing long term. So, you know, I always advise parents, sure, some kids will need um, grommets, um, but uh, what about a conservative option? Look at the kid's bite. You know, if you see the kid's got a narrow palate, if you see the kid's got a deep overbite, 100% overbite, these are the kids that I find by building up the um, deciduous teeth, uh, and it was a technique first uh, described by Dr. Merle Loudon, he's referenced in here, I'm happy to send you a copy of his article. Uh, we can see uh, a big improvement that the TMJ is pushed away from this area. We then um, work with an ear, nose and throat doctor who will be able to clear the large adenoids and tonsils. We may need to develop the arch or use the tongue to develop it. So it's a combination approach of the ear, nose and throat doctor, the dentist who does orthopedics, and the my functional therapist who's changing tongue posture. Now, if you get all that happening, you'll see this um, uh, middle ear problem uh, uh, really improve. Let me quote you some other, I'll put my glasses on. So here's a paper from Laryngoscope, very respected journal in 2001. Children with dental deep overbites are three times more likely to have uh, grommets placed or recommended by a pediatric ear, nose and throat doctor. Uh, in the functional orthodontist, this is a paper by Merle Loudon. Um, the greatest cause of otitis media is an overclosed or an improper dental bite. Otitis media can be successfully treated using primary molars. And he describes a number of dental techniques to reshape the baby molars to open the deep bite. Journal of Clinical Pediatric Dentistry, 1998. Acolic resin bonded to the top surfaces of lower baby molars is an effective method to change the bite and reduce or eliminate otitis media in young children between the ages of two to six years of age. I've got a whole uh, list of articles uh, on my laptop which specifically deal between the dental correlation, 
and the treatment of otitis media. More than happy to send you those papers. If you have any questions, email me. But again, I'd really recommend this book. I mean, I've read this book maybe six, seven times over, and it's a gem. I give it to parents and I say, hey, look, might be a little bit different thought. Read it, look at the references. And I find parents and are empowered and they make their own decision. They're very happy I gave them an alternative to surgery. So thanks for listening. We'll catch up again at another podcast. Thank you.